you doing today? Do you feel like doing a little bit of DIYing with me? Come on in. Let's get started. So what do I have going on for you for today? Well, today I'm bringing to you my top Christmas DIYs and I'm gonna go so far as to say that the majority of them are using items that you can get from the Dollar Tree. So go pop some popcorn, put your feet up, and hopefully these DIYs will inspire you to do some Christmas DIYing of your own. Let's get started. For this DIY, I will be using two of these rust-colored felt sheets. I absolutely love this color. I'm gonna fold my felt sheet in half long ways because I'm going to cut two inch strips. And by cutting it in half, it just makes it a lot easier to cut an even strip. And so with one of these, I guess this is like an eight and a half by 11, you should be able to get five two inch strips. Because I need two by two inch squares, I don't wanna cut them individually. Who wants to do that? So by stacking the strips on top of each other, then just by eyeballing, what a two by two inch square would be, the length of it, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut all my strips together. Then I'm gonna cut the squares from corner to corner, giving me a longer, wider triangle. And I'm gonna do that to all the squares. And again, I did use two sheets of the rust felt for this. To start off with, I will be using this six inch foam tree. And yes, you can tell that it has a bit of damage to it because it has been in my stash for a while, but that's okay. It's not gonna show, I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna place some hot glue on the long side of the triangles. And with the point down, I'm just going to place my triangles on my foam tree just like this. And I'm gonna do that all the way around the bottom. And I'm gonna overlap them just a bit because it kind of looks funny if you don't. And so you wanna be left with kind of that open triangle in between the two felt triangles that you just glued. And so I think I put about four around the base of this to start off with. For the second row, we wanna fill in these open areas here. And so we're gonna do that just by offsetting the next set of triangles with that first row, filling in that opening. Now, when you place your second row, you don't want to go too high up from the first row. You just kind of want to go right above it. And believe it or not, it really doesn't take that long. But you want to do that, especially on those first two rows, because you don't want the bottom of your foam to show and you don't want any real big open areas. Now we're going to move on to the third row and we're going to fill in this area right above it as well. And you want to try and line that third row of triangles up with the first row, as you can see like where the points are. And so you're gonna do that all the way around again, and we're gonna work our way all the way up the tree, offsetting each row from the last row you just set. Once you've reached about this point in layering your triangles, look at how pretty that looks, I love it. You're gonna wanna stop. I saved one of my squares off to the side, and I know this is not in camera view, but I am cutting a circle. It doesn't need to be perfect because that circle needs to go on the top of our tree. And so you want to place that before you go all the way up your tree with your triangles so you can cover the edges of the circle that lay over the top. Now that the top of my tree is covered, I'm going to go ahead and finish up my tree by adding more of the triangles. I will tell you that as you go to the top of your tree, it gets smaller and I found that I did need to trim up some of my triangles a bit and make them just a bit smaller because they were too big and it didn't look proportionate to the tree as it was going up. And so as I was doing it, I would just kind of trim them up as needed as you can see that I'm doing here. And it was just by cutting a bit off the long side. Dollar Tree's got these wood blocks by Crafter Square, which are amazing, but some of you may be saying, what do we do with them? Well, today we are going to use them for the base of our tree. So to put a hole in these, if you don't have a drill, I'm gonna show you how you can put a hole in them using a Phillips screwdriver. Yeah, just a Phillips screwdriver. 
Just by placing the screwdriver where you want your hole to be and taking a hammer and hammering the screwdriver into the block, it's gonna go in, it's gonna make a hole, then just by simply twisting it, the screwdriver will come out and you can also make the hole a bit bigger and deeper using a Phillips screwdriver. So I've got my hole and this hole is big enough for one of Dollar Tree's Crafter Square dowels. And so my dowel fits nicely in there. To color these pieces of wood, I will be using one of my favorite methods, liquid shoe polish. I use a combination of the brown and the black. You will see here that I did fill in the previous holes with some of Dollar Tree spackling. I don't know why I didn't show that, but it's pretty easy to do just by placing it in there and wiping off the excess. So I'm gonna give all three of these blocks a good coating of the liquid shoe polish. I've had some of you ask me, does it have a smell, an existing smell once it dries? In my opinion, it doesn't. It doesn't rub off once it's dried. Do you need to seal it? I never do, but if you want to, you totally can. If it's gonna be outside, I'd say, yeah, seal it. But if it's an indoor decor piece, I don't really see the need for it. So once I've got the brown shoe polish on my wood, once it dries, it kind of dries with an orangish red undertone that I don't much care for. So by taking some of the black shoe polish, going over the brown, it's gonna deepen and darker that brown and give me a beautiful walnut brown that I love. I'm gonna do this to all three of my wood blocks and I'm gonna do it to the three skewers because I am doing three trees. I just haven't shown you that yet. And would you look there, look at how gorgeous that brown is using shoe polish of all things. And I do suggest using this thicker dowel versus a skewer because the skewers are thinner and I found that they didn't hold the weight of my trees as well. When I place my dowels in the tree, it is a good idea to put some hot glue in there because it, there's not going to be anything to hold the dowel in there and with working with foam sometimes that hole can get a bit bigger and then it won't stay so you do want to reinforce it with some hot glue then I'm going to just place some hot glue in the hole of my block and ta-da we've just made a really cool rustic tree this is another color that I made using this I guess creamish tan felt absolutely love this I did three different colors I used the rust color felt, this cream felt, and I used a green, and they all kind of had that multi-color to them. I also wanted to shorten some of the dowels to give the trees different heights, and so you can very easily do that just by kind of cutting through the wood a little bit and then breaking it off. Now, I know that foam trees can be a bit costly when you get some of the bigger ones, like at Walmart, and so if you take one of Dollar Tree's poster boards and you cut it up into squares, I did a 10 by 10 square. I also did, I believe, an 11 by 11. And then I did a larger one that was 12 by 12. That's gonna give you three different size trees. And you're getting it for a dollar because you just cut up Dollar Tree's poster board. Then just by taping it together and cutting the bottom off, you've just made yourself a cone. Then if you take one of these round floral foams and just hot glue it up inside, that is all you need to be able to put your dowling in it. And you just made these beautiful trees for way less than I did because I used foam trees. To top my trees off, I wanted to use these glitter stars that Dollar Tree carries every Christmas. They typically carry them in gold and silver, but that's not gonna work for me. So using this Art Deco, what color was this? I think this was Rich Espresso. I'm gonna give these a good coat of that because these stars are amazing. They can be very rustic, but they're not rustic when they're silver and that doesn't suit my decor. And so just by giving them a coat of paint, we're gonna make them work for us. I don't need the coil part to this. It didn't look good on the tree. I did try it. So by bending it up, and just taking some wire cutters, you can easily remove it. These don't pull off, so don't try because I did ruin a star by trying to pull it off. I'm gonna place some hot glue just on the inner edge of the star and I'm just gonna simply place it on top. Nothing fancy, this is a rustic tree.
here's one that is so quick and easy using these Dollar Tree plaques I like to find the fun shaped ones because why not it adds to the personality we're gonna use the back side of this because why because it's a blank canvas so all I've got to do is remove this pesky sticker and I'm gonna give this plaque a good coating with some spray paint this is a flat matte spray paint by color palace you can get a can of this at Walmart for about a dollar so why not to save some time or chalk paint once I've got a good coat on it I'm gonna go in with some of this thicker jute twine you can find a bundle of this at Walmart versus this thinner twine at Dollar Tree. You're going to get it for about $5, a two to three pound bundle. Right there in the center of this plaque, I'm going to wrap this twine, just kind of making a strip of twine here in the center. Because why? Because I like twine and I think it's going to look rustic. It's going to look cool. And yeah, this is a rustic Christmas DIY. See, look, look how nice that looks against the black. We're already almost done. These pesky holes that I usually fill in, I'm not filling them in. I'm gonna take the thinner twine and I'm gonna feed it through there and this is going to be what is our hanger. And yeah, that's what we're using it for because that's what it's meant for, right? You can find this ornament at Dollar Tree, a gold angel ornament. They've got reindeer, they've got a ton of them. Pick one you like. You can use gold, silver, or even rose gold. You're gonna hot glue it right to the center there, just like that, looking pretty cool already, right? But this is missing something. It's missing one of my twine bows. Where there is twine, there should be a twine bow. So that's what I'm gonna finish this off with here at the top. And I'm gonna do it using the thinner twine several strands thick because I like the look of that versus using the thicker twine several strands thick. It just looks too clunky. That's all there is to this DIY. How amazing is this? It's quick, it's easy, it's budget friendly, it's rustic, and the outcome is amazing. Let's take a look at this piece. I love this. This DIY was done several years ago. I still have it. Here's another quick and easy one. These ceramic candlestick holders, I'm gonna give them a good coating of spray paint. I'm also gonna go by the gift box section, pick up a couple of gift boxes. A bigger one would be optimal, but since I found these two smaller ones, I can make a bigger one just by hot gluing two of them together, just like this, right on top of each other. Then I'm gonna take the satin ribbon to cover up that pesky seam there and add to the decor of this DIY. I'm just gonna wrap this satin ribbon right around the center there, covering that up, and nobody's gonna be none the wiser. Look at that. Going in with some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut Stain. I am. I'm going to distress this, rustic it up a bit, because why would we have a clean package when we can add some distressing to the edges and it's going to add everything to it? Now using some hot glue, going to hit these candlesticks that I spray painted. Back in the day, I was really into spray painting. I am doing a couple of these a different a couple different sizes so by stacking two of them then I can hot glue them and I have got a set of three that is gonna look amazing look at that gorgeous right when you put them next to each other just kind of coordinate the colors together and you're gonna have some really fun Christmas package decor pieces that you can put on a table but if you can't find these boxes guess what I've got you covered pick up a couple of these boxes here some of Costco's wrapping paper that's double-sided. You're gonna get a roll of this for $9.99. They've got a ton. You're gonna wrap these boxes with them and look at how amazing those once before birthday boxes now look festive and fun for the Christmas season. Has it been totally obvious that I love working with these plaques this holiday season? I'm not done yet. I've taken stock in these plaques. Today, you're gonna need three of them. If you can't find these exact ones, it's okay. Any plaques that are about this size will do. The size really is dependent on how big you want this DIY to be. I'm gonna remove these embellishments. Today, I'm not gonna store these because I'm gonna use them to help attach the three plaques together. Since I have them, why not? I'm gonna use a hodgepodge of things on the back of this plaque because it is the back and nobody's gonna see it. And if you wanna cover it up, you can cover it up. Using some of this wood glue by Super Glue that you can get at the Dollar Tree. Have I told you that this stuff is amazing? Because it is. I'm gonna place them on the back of these embellishments and just place these embellishments where the two plaques meet. In turn, 
attaching the two plaques together. But we've got three plaques here that we need to attach together. So I'm just gonna move on over to some of these handy jumbo popsicle sticks and do pretty much the same thing. Once I've got everything glued together, I am gonna go in with some masking tape and just kind of place them across the embellishments, across the popsicle sticks, kind of really pulling those plaques together so we get a nice, good seam. Yeah, a seam. We don't want a gap there. And sometimes these things kind of slide when you're using glue. And so, yeah, just put some tape. And we're not even gonna take the tape off. We're gonna leave the tape on. Because remember, this is the back of this DIY. I'm just gonna fast forward right through the part where I showed putting the spackling on here. I don't really think I recorded it anyway. That was the back side. Don't know why I wanted to show you that again. For this next step, I'm gonna be using this fabric. This is a yard of fabric by Created that you can get at Walmart for about $6. This isn't a new fabric. This seems to be the theme of this fall harvest Christmas season that I am going with this year. I'm gonna cover these three plaques with it. And to do that, yes, I'm gonna add a good base coat of some Mod Podge. Any Mod Podge will work. Matte, gloss, you pick it. I'm using the gloss that I still have in my stash because you know I'm not a gloss finish person. So I need to get rid of this stuff. Did I say we're gonna give this plaque a good coat of that? Once I've got a good base coat, I'm gonna go ahead and place the fabric over the top of the Mod Podge, smooth it out nicely, and then reapply a second coat to the top of the fabric because this is gonna help adhere it to the plaque. It's gonna stiffen it. And yeah, that's what we want because the stiffer the fabric is when you go to cut that excess fabric off, the better because you're gonna get a nice, smooth, clean cut using your plaques as a guide and a nice safety razor. I'm calling it a safety razor with a fresh new blade. This is the easiest way to cut that excess fabric off from the sides. And to this DIY, I will be adding one of these plaques here. Any shape that is similar to this in nature will work fine. When you remove this embellishment, don't get rid of it because I will be using it in an upcoming DIY. So we're gonna repurpose it. We're saving these because we're gonna reuse it. Did I say that yet? And for this plaque, we are going to need to fill in those holes because we don't want them to show. I will be painting <coughs> this plaque with Waverly's Crimson Red. And to this red, I will be adding a bit of Hello Hobbies Brown because you know me, I am, have I ever said I'm a creature of habit? Cause I totally am. You know, I like those muted rustic colors. I am not about the bright ones. And so to mute out a bright red, if you add just a touch of brown to it, you're gonna get more of a rustic color, that muted kind of darker red that I like to go for. And so yes, this plaque is gonna get a good couple coats of this, this red. This red is one that I'll be using throughout the Christmas season as well. Guess what? I am going to be attaching this plaque to the three plaques that we covered in gingham. And so to do that, I'm gonna pound the bottom half of this plaque with a ton of hot glue. And I said the bottom half because I am not gonna place this whole plaque on the gingham plaques. That's what I'm gonna reference them as. You can see here just how I'm doing it. I am using the halfway point of this decorative plaque and placing it at the top of my gingham plaques. Did I just make that totally confusing? You'll see what I did here in a minute. Yes, I will be distressing this piece, surprise, surprise, using some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut Stain. Now, if Walnut Stain isn't for you, pick a shade that is. He's got a variety of shades and colors that you can use. You can find this Distress Ink at just about any hobby store. Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. You can even find it in Amazon. I will link it in the description box below in my Amazon store if you're interested. So to finish those edges up, if you just take a stiffer brush, because this is a bigger piece, I'm using a bigger brush this time to get the job done. You just kind of run that brush in that distress ink and just kind of go in a circular motion along the edges of your DIY. It not only is going to give them a nice finished look, but it's going to give them a nice aged look as well. That is called distressing. I will say initially I was just gonna go along the outside edges, but you can see that the center of this is just too stark and white. And so just by lightly kind of going over it, I'm gonna kind of mute out that white and rustic it up a bit, dirty it up a bit. Yes, dirty is rustic, that's what I'm gonna say. 
To this top plaque, I'm gonna be adding a vinyl decal, and this one says, mm -hmm, Merry Christmas. Closure, this is not a vinyl decal that I personally designed, but it is one that I'm using. I am very mindful of the fact that not everybody has a Cricut, and that is why I like to give you options. An option for this decal would be to buy some stickers or poster board stickers from the Dollar Tree and use those. Go to Michael's Hobby Lobby Joann's and buy a sticker pack in a font that you like. You could use those. This is a card holder. So what are we gonna use to hold the cards on? Twine, of course we're gonna use twine. I'm gonna incorporate twine into this. I have to, it's a Christmas DIY. Out with the rapia, in with the twine, yes. So by hot gluing the twine onto the back side of these plaques, then wrapping the twine around these three plaques several times in a fun way, in an organized way, we will now have a way to hang our cards on the front of these plaques. Dollar Tree is starting to put out some of their Christmas ornaments. I found this red and white Buffalo Check Snowflake ornament set of six here. Perfect, six for a dollar, you can't beat that. Red and white Buffalo Check is going to contrast nicely with the black and gray Buffalo Check that I'm using, giving this DIY just the pop of color that we need, tying these snowflakes into that top plaque that says Merry Christmas. Oh my goodness, that was a mouthful. Can you tell I've had coffee this morning? I have, but I thought that these would be fun to add to the front of this plaque, just adding a bit more detail, more embellishment, so it doesn't look so plain. To hold the cards on this plaque, I will be using these medium-sized clothespins by Crafter Square. I know you all knew that already and I didn't have to tell you, that was kind of a no-brainer, but I will tell you, make sure you go with the medium-sized clothespins because the smaller ones don't really seem to hold the heavier cards all that well. And I also want to put out there, when you do add the twine to your plaque, you want to kind of pull it on the tighter side. You don't want there to be any give with your twine because that will just help hold the cards up better on the front of this plaque. Let's go take a look at this, shall we? I don't really have any cards yet to show you, but you'll get the idea. Cards are coming probably pretty soon. That's why I'm bringing you this DIY now. Alrighty, so getting started. Yep, you're gonna need two of these foam orange pumpkins. We're gonna start off by removing the stem, but don't go throwing it away just yet because you may need it. Now with these pumpkins, I wanna cut them in half, and to cut them in half, yep, I went right into the kitchen and I'm gonna use a bread knife. Yeah, that's what that is, a bread knife. And I'm gonna use the seam here as a guide. Why not use it? We don't want the seam to show in our DIY anyway. And for this DIY, we're gonna need four half pumpkins. That's why we needed two whole pumpkins. Today, I will be using some of Hello Hobbies Pumpkin Orange. This is a chalk paint that has taken the place of Waverly's chalk paint at my Walmart. I'm not gonna lie, there are a couple colors that I am mildly obsessed with with this paint line. And this happens to be one of them. I feel like this is the perfect orange. Nothing needs to be done to it because it's muted, it's rustic, and yeah, we need it to cover up that bright neon orange. I'm gonna paint all four of my pumpkin hats with, yes, Hello Hobbies Pumpkin Orange. And this here is a fabric yard. This is Buffalo Check. Yes, it is, and it is by Create It. This is one that you can get at Walmart for about $6. I used it in my last DIY. Guess what? We're using it in today's DIY. I'm gonna be using one of these plaques from, guess where, Dollar Tree. You're gonna wanna remove this welcome embellishment, but do not throw it away. No, no, no. We like to save this stuff because we might use it. I'm gonna take some Mod Podge and on the blank canvas side of this plaque, which is the back side, because why would we use the other side? We want it a blank canvas. I'm gonna give this a nice good coating of some Mod Podge because guess what we're gonna do? Yes. I'm going to put the Buffalo Check fabric right on top of this covering the plaque because I love this. Why would we paint Buffalo Check on when we can use fabric or scrapbooking paper? I find that fabric is a bit easier to use when covering a plaque because you don't get the wrinkles and the bubbles as much. So I say go with fabric. Just buy a yard of it and use it all season because I'll probably be using this fabric at Christmas time too. Once I got the fabric on, I'm gonna go ahead and put a second coat of Mod Podge, and this is really just gonna help adhere it onto the plaque. It is probably best to wait 
until the fabric is good and dry from the Mod Podge before you remove the excess fabric. And the easiest way to do that, I have found, is to just take a safety blade. I'm calling this a safety blade. Some say it's not, I say it is. And using a fresh new blade and the plaque as a guide, if you just run that blade right along the plaque there, you're gonna get a perfect, nice, clean cut and you're gonna remove that excess fabric. And guess what? The front of your plaque is now covered in buffalo check and looking amazing. Guess what I am using to distress with today? Yes, some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut Stain. I love this stuff, did you know that? I find the easiest way to distress when using this ink is to use a stiffer paintbrush. Cut the bristles down pretty low. There you have got a stiffer brush and now you have got a brush that is perfect for applying this stain so we can distress our DIYs. That is the end goal there, is to make it look distressed because we're going rustic with this DIY. Surprise, surprise, right? Kelly liking rustic and distressing? I know, I am not a creature of habit or predictable, am I? Now don't go cleaning your brushes or putting your Distress Ink away yet because we've got four more pumpkins that we've got to add some distressing to. When doing these pumpkins, it's not so much about distressing them, although it kind of is, it's more about adding dimension. So these pumpkins have indentations on them because pumpkins have indentations, right? I really don't know what they're called. What is it called on a pumpkin? It's just the shape of a pumpkin, right? And so, Instead of just leaving it plain and orange, if you add some ink to those lines, you're adding dimension and you're actually giving it some depth. And what else are we giving it? Yes, some character and personality. That is what screams and stands out the most in a DIY. It's those finishing touches that make all the difference. Seriously, look at these pumpkins. Just adding those lines makes all the difference in the world. Now, I didn't show you placing all four pumpkins down on this plaque, but that is in fact what I did, and I like to space them out before I actually glue them down so I know just where I wanna put them. With these, I am using a low temperature hot glue. Do not use a high temperature because these are foam, it will melt it. So if you don't wanna use a hot glue, you can probably use a Leans or even that wood glue by Crazy Glue that Dollar Tree has. But since I have a low temperature one, I'm gonna go ahead and use that because it's not gonna melt the foam and I'm gonna hot glue these down into place. For the stems of my pumpkin, yes, I am using these white birch stems that Dollar Tree has. They've got a bag of them, which is amazing. So when you see those, I've told you in the past, you gotta pick them up and put them in your stash because they are amazing. If your Dollar Tree stinks and you don't have these, then you're gonna wanna paint the stems that we removed that came with these pumpkins originally, you're gonna need to cut them in half so that way you have four and then you're just gonna put the half on top. And yes, we are going to use the embellishment that was once on this plaque and we're gonna replace it at the top. So when you do place your pumpkins, you're gonna to wanna to leave enough space at the top so you can place back on this embellishment. I didn't feel like anything else needed to be done with this. I felt like it was the perfect color, the wording was there, so why not reuse it? And of course, each of these pumpkins is going to get topped off with not a twine bow, but come on, say it with me everybody, a raffia bow because it is fall and harvest and fall and harvest screams what? Raffia, yes. Because this is a wall decor piece, we need a hanger for it on the back. And I am fresh out of hangers, so guess what I'm gonna use? Some twine, a couple strands thick with a couple of knots on the end, and I'm just gonna pound it with some hot glue so it doesn't fall off the wall. I know I don't have to show you all where these letters go. You all are DIYers, you're crafters, you're pros. You've got this down. But for those of you who don't know, I'm gonna hot glue these letters on the front of each of the pumpkins, spelling out the word fall, I chose brown because I'm an earth tones person. I'm a creature of habit, have I said that? And these are the perfect finishing touch to this wall decor DIY. Let's go take a look at this up on the wall or outside. I'm not sure, let's go see what pictures I took. Can I just say I love this piece? I do, it was quick, easy, budget friendly and the outcome of this is amazing. How easy was this to make? So I say go out, get yourself some pumpkins, get yourself a plaque and make this DIY today and hang it up in your house every year. 
who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day. It's going out to Betty, who's bringing to us another one of these amazing recreations, recycling and repurposing those Starbucks Frappuccino jars. I am loving your spin and your twist on this, Betty. Thank you so much for sharing your creation with us today. I don't know that I can pick a favorite. Last year's DIYs are gonna be hard to top, but I am feeling inspired for this year. I hope you all enjoyed my Christmas DIYs. If you're looking for even more inspiration outside of this video, make sure to click on the video right over here and it'll take you to some of my oldie but goodies. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, Your favorite? Let me know in the comments below.